come on, Sylvie gasped. She took a step forward, but Tristan stopped. He shook his head, trying to clear it, and then pulled the shield from his back. Oh, what are you... The attack came with a suddenness and ferocity that would have ended them if Tristan hadn't been ready. But he raised the shield and pulled Sylvie beneath it as the creature, whatever it was, crashed into them, falling on them like a mountain collapsing. Its enormous wings, visible to Sylvie on both sides of the upraised shield, buffeted them and the monster hammered at them with its beak. But the shield turned the blows aside. With a screech, the creature launched itself into the air, regrouping for another attack. The children ran. They were almost to the door when Tristan stumbled. The shield fell to the ground and Sylvie looked over her shoulder to see a monstrous bird diving, a blur of ragged feathers and gleaming talons with a black serrated beak. Sylvie spun and reaching back she grabbed hold of Tristan and pulled him past her, sending him through the door. She closed her eyes and braced herself. The impact never came. Only silence. Finally, she opened her eyes. The bird was gone. She turned. Through the door, Tristan was slowly getting to his feet. Past him, on the horizon, the sun had just set. Did, did we make it in time? Sylvie asked. But Tristan did not speak. He simply stared at her as he always had, his look neither conveying nor betraying anything. He was unchanged. Oh, Tris. There was a sound behind her, movements in the shadows, footsteps. Sylvie turned, fearing some new terror. Instead, she found herself staring into a sea of children's faces. They had awakened. She backed out the door, stunned. When she turned to Tristan, he was looking into the hourglass, at the children that were beginning to appear with an intensity she had never seen before. And then she understood. They had been on time. Tristan had not come here for his voice. He had come here to set the children of the hourglass free.